Hello and welcome back to the UK edition. And how are we doing today? Well enough, I'm sure. But could it be even better? Who can tell? Maybe Ayurveda can. So many of us do turn away from it, don't we? But the world is turning towards it. And this is not just some romantic recall of the ancient. The second International Ayurveda Congress held in London offered new resolutions and some unexpected participants. What we find with modern medicine is that there are a lot of diseases which we call chronic diseases um, that we don't have the solutions for with modern medicine. So I started investigating what more could be offered to patients and I learned about um, Ayurveda. Well, Ayurveda starts by talking about health, which is something that I was not trained in. And um, it sounded so good that I decided in the 1980s to go and investigate whether it really worked. So I took a job in a hospital outside of Delhi where patients were being treated with Ayurveda. My role there was as a Western doctor to look for any diseases that I should be treating. The first thing I noticed when I went to the hospital was how healthy the doctors are. The Ayurvedic doctors seem to radiate health and they work just as hard as Western doctors. And the second thing I learned was how rarely my knowledge was needed. Some conditions would come like infections or malaria or thyroid disorder and I'd say, oh, I can treat this one. And the Vaidyas would say, just give it a little time. And I watched and I was amazed. I saw wonderful results. Vedyas from 55 countries attended the meeting in London and just about everybody spoke of greatly beneficial results and increased popularity of Ayurveda. It seems that yoga has opened the doors to Ayurveda. It's exponentially increasing. First came yoga. That has been exponentially increasing and spreading. And now everyone who's practicing yoga, they are also becoming interested in the health tradition related to yoga, which is Ayurveda. So now it is picking up and it is becoming exponentially increasing. The usual street view of Ayurveda is that it's all right for health tonics and some herbal remedies for minor ailments. But a top geneticist from Cambridge University is studying aspects of Ayurveda that can help in the study of DNA. Now Ayurveda, the ancient science, has always insisted that any input that comes to you from your five senses has an impact on your behavior, on aspects of your health. And what we are learning today at the cutting edge of uh, DNA biology and aspects of epigenetics, the epigenome, aspects of the plastic aspects of the genome, is just this, that everything you do, you hear, you touch, you smell, you sense, at some point has an impact on your system and it leaves marks on your DNA. So the food you've eaten today is impacting some aspect of your DNA in some organ in your body, in some tissue in, in your organ in your body. And on that basis, scientists are pushing for study of Ayurveda and epigenetics together. There is complete 100% possibility of overlap between the ancient systems and what is happening in just about every lab in the, in the country or around the world that's looking at aspects of molecular genetics and modern biology. New emphasis is being placed on using Ayurveda to treat psychological disorders. Because nowadays what we found that many people, they are coming for their physical problems, but nobody is coming to report the psychological disturbances. Means there are some mood disorders, there are some changes in the emotions, but they are coming mainly at the late stage. So, but Ayurveda says that we have to analyze or we have to assess when the patient comes to you for the first time, we have to assess it's a mental bi biotype also. That is the psychological biotype. That is called as in Ayurveda Manasa Prakruti. And after that, you know that the mana, 
in Ayurveda, the mind is called as the mana and it has three qualities that is sattva, raja and tama. So we have to increase the sattva quality and raja, tama, it should be in lower quantity. The world is discovering new faces of Ayurveda. But it's not just around the world, there is now a rediscovery of the benefits of Ayurveda within India too. Last 10-15 years, people are coming more towards Ayurveda because the hazards of modern medicine is increasing a lot. And people are coming for the prevention, for promotive of health, and they want their health body should be healthy. So with the Ayurveda, their body, mind, and uh, this will be very good. And that's why they are coming more towards Ayurveda. Doctors in countries such as Britain and Denmark are restricted in prescribing Ayurvedic medicines but still find the more fundamental Ayurvedic ways beneficial to patients. But what is so wonderful about Ayurveda is that most conditions and most imbalances they can be corrected by diet and lifestyle advice supplemented with modern medicine. And also in Ayurveda, it's really an accomplishment of the physician if we do not use herbal products. If we can really select especially that diet and that lifestyle that is most suitable for that personal and individual situation then we can actually really correct imbalance, we can prevent disease and we can promote longevity. I can offer Ayurvedic advice on diet and lifestyle very easily to my patients and I find that they're really keen to have this knowledge and it makes a tremendous difference. Problems of digestion, sleep, elimination, um, musculoskeletal problems, these are respiratory problems, these are very much helped by Ayurvedic knowledge. But it doesn't have to be either or. It's about what works best and when. Uh, I will say that sometime in emergency, you have to go to the modern system of medicines. But if you say that it's a uh, serious cases, or it's a chronic cases, or uh, lifestyle uh, diseases, Ayurveda has a better cure. And uh, in my mind, we should go together. Either it's a modern system or it's an Ayurveda system. The body has to be cured, the person has to be cured. So the both people, both system, everybody has a limitation. Every system has a limitation. Either it's allopathy or it's Ayurveda. So for the prevention point of view, for the curative point of view, we should go together to make a disease-free society. The London Congress resolved to set up contact among all Ayurvedic colleges within India and around the world to standardize study and treatment practices. It will now work with the Ministry of Ayush, a new ministry set up in India by the Modi government to promote Ayurveda, to set up an academic chair in a university in every country. Scientific programs will be developed for each country. Communication will be taken up with health authorities in a bid to remove hurdles in the way of prescribing Ayurvedic medicines. The Ministry of Ayush was urged to set up an international federation of Ayurveda and Yoga. Just as Ayurveda is being exported, India is drawing doctors and experts for the study of Ayurveda. Some countries are showing more interest than others. In Brazil, the state healthcare system pays for Ayurveda treatment and Brazil will host the next Congress. More and more doctors in the West, in America, Canada, Europe, are coming uh, to taking Ayurveda courses. They are, they are practicing Ayurveda. Switzerland has given official recognition to practice Ayurveda. Hungary has given. So I think in future time, the British will also will understand that they will give for the betterment of the peoples of this country, and which is cost effective, and which is uh, for the prevention before falling ill, that you can you can be better. That's why the main thing. The authorities in Denmark are feeling that Ayurveda is very sensible. They are aware that this common sense in a very systematic way, and it's very beneficial if it is administered correctly. And it is very beneficial as long as we are giving uh, sound advice on diet and lifestyle and it's coming from qualified and properly trained and experienced medical doctors. I think it's essential that we integrate this knowledge into um, practice within the NHS. Aging population, multiple 
um, co uh, co comorbidities, people living with long-term conditions, they can all benefit from this. The government now wants people to have more health, uh, self-help, and Ayurveda offers the knowledge of how they can help themselves. Ayurveda seems headed the way of yoga, which so much of India rediscovered after the West discovered it. But time for a quick break and then it's time for Baisakhi, isn't it? The season to look at some of the remarkable ways of Sikhs in Britain in just a bit. Welcome back and before we say Satsri Akar to some wonderful six, let's dip in at the Ram Navmi celebrations in Wembley. Ram Navami was celebrated at temples across the United Kingdom this week. The Pallab Nidhi Mandir on Ealing Road in Wembley hosted a Ram Katha to mark celebrations. The Katha followed a pilgrimage by thousands to the temple earlier in the day. Devotees donated thousands of pounds on the occasion to support temples and the programs in India. Sanatan Hindu Mandir, it belongs to everyone. It doesn't belong to a particular sect. It belongs to everyone in the world, whether it's a black, white, Christian, Hindu, Muslim or anyone, as long as they keep with the tradition when they come here, that's Sanatan Hindu Mandir. Now, in our religion, Hindu Dharma, Hindu Me, Ram Janam, ye bot mahatvapo It's a very, very important day for the Hindus, and it comes every time in March, April, once in a year. So we celebrate that every year. Up to now, we didn't have a hall. Now, since January, we have built this hall. We celebrate it in hall as well as the temple. In the temple, Ram, Jan Ram Chandra Ji ka janma hota hai. We celebrate that. We do the ceremony at 12 o'clock. Puja karte hai. And we, about, if you had come to the temple by 12 o'clock in the after mid midday, you would have seen about 10,000 people in a queue. If you, have, if you have, uh, film the queue, there will be 5,000 people standing outside and about 2,000 inside and others just coming out. And we can fit about 1,000 people moving around in the temple. And it's a unique temple and everyone would like to come and visit this place, you know. With Sanjay Suri in London, this is Edwin Thomas for News 18. Will someone count the number of times Ram is mentioned in the Guru Granth Sahib? Might be something there for some of us to think about. So from Ram Nami, we move straight to Baisakhi, to the Punjab in Britain. A military band set the tone for celebrations of the British Sikh Association in London. On an evening that celebrated Sikh contribution to the British Army, where British Defence Secretary Michael Fallon was the chief guest. I'm deeply honoured to be here tonight at the British Sikh Association annual dinner. We have a number, a large number of Sikhs who've stepped forward to serve in our armed forces, in the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, and serve as reservists. And Sikhs not only make very good service men and women, of course, Sikhs share our values, have always traditionally shared British values and I'm very proud of the contribution that Sikhs make to our country and make to our armed forces. The evening brought a strong reminder that the military associations of Sikhs with the British is not a thing of the past. Sikhs uh, have done what they do best. They have become part of British society, integrated themselves uh, and an event such as this is an excellent opportunity to showcase that. We've got people from, from hospitality, from finance, from management to those of us in defence, the armed forces and, and the police. Here as members of the community showcasing integration, cooperation 
and contribution to British society and values which are very, not only very dear to us, but coincide and, um, with those values of, of the Sikh faith and are fundamental to, to everything that we do. So to be a part of something like this today is, is an honour and a privilege uh, and it's always interesting to meet new people from, from the community and really engage with them. It's been a fantastic experience as a Sikh in Her Majesty's Armed Forces. Um, it's very empowering when I go in with my uncut uh, hair, my beard, my turban intact, I put on the uniform. It's, it's a very empowering, empowering um, feeling to be able to contribute back to my country, to, to be able to do something positive and help people, but also remember where I've come from and what my roots are as well. A celebration was organized by prominent businessman Rami Ranger and a Drew Sikh achievers across a broad spectrum, not just from the military. There's a tremendous contribution. As you know, Sikhs are the most prosperous in this country. 82% Sikhs on their own home in Britain, more than any community, even more than Jewish community, high achiever. So we want to tell the people that the, there's a lot more to Sikhs than meets the eye. And you know, they say hidden talent is no talent. And a lot of people get confused with the mistaken identity of Sikh. So it is very important the local people and the people of other faiths should know what the Sikh Guru and their followers stand for. It is all about Seva, that we believe in Seva of mankind, regardless of race, color, gender, or ethnic, anything. So we are inclusive religion. It's a great uh, contribution to the society, but moreover, it's not only the celebration what is happening in the present century or present day. It is the celebration of the Guruji's message to the wider world that we should live and serve the humanity, uh, serve the peace and bring the unity amongst all the communities. Baisakhi this year is quite special. It comes on the 350th anniversary of the birth of Guru Gobind Singh. Khalsa Miro Roop Hai Khas, Khalsa Me Ho Karunivas. This was a message given by Guru Gobind Singh. And uh, uh, the basic message was to serve the community. And for that, uh, that's what the Britishers and the Sikhs have been doing throughout uh, since they have been in touch with Britishers. If they had done a good thing, they have been with them. If they had done something wrong, they had even fought against them and with them. So it all depends upon the situations. And that's what uh, uh, the, uh, my main objective is to promote the Sikh values, the Sikh uh, turban, I would say, uh, to uh, bring uh, this image uh, in a positive manner within the society so that people know our values and our dress-ups and how we stand within the community. British Sikhs now have access to several radio stations, newspapers and television channels serving them. Akal Channel is the only channel which is dedicated to Siri Akal Taksev, which is a supreme body in Sikhism by Harmandir Sahib. We have three duties, Sikhi, Seva and Simran. Our tagline is, we promise we deliver. We unite the community, we live in a multicultural society in UK. All my life I lived in a mixed community and that's what we're promoting. The Sikh regiment, the Sikh men. Unmistakably, Sikhs have fought and won battles at many times and on many fronts. The Sikhs have an extended history of uh, interaction with the British but the greatest interaction is on the battlefield, initially against the British in the anglo sikh Wars and then for the British during the World Wars and other campaigns. But it's a very complicated history. Uh, but this event is critical because it celebrates the birth of the Khalsa and the founding of that spirit of the said soldier. Well, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a love-hate relationship. Uh, there have been uh, issues of tension, issues of exploitation, but then there have been examples of loyalty, examples of uh, bravery. So it's a very contradictory relationship. What important is that we see these days the importance of Sikh community. And we are very keen to help this world uh, to stop the terrorism and wars, which is all unnecessary. We are very strong in the belief that Sikh community must participate to stop the terrorism, to stop the unnecessary war. 
and uh, our object is also to organize uh, interfaith seminars and symposiums whereby we can spread the message of Sikhism and that is most importantly peaceful coexistence. From all of us here at News 18, wishing everyone a very happy Vaisakhi. It's Punjab's way of saying hello to spring. See you soon.